And so my, my uh, intellectual development, if you want to put it like that, was a sort of uh, a, a scientific in the sense that it was always about looking at phenomena, testing it, trying to define its limits. The strange thing that happened to me, because I guess I eventually became involved with psychedelics, was this method of testing, demanding proof, never taking anything for granted. Normally what that does is it, it deflates reality. It flattens it. It makes it industrial and existential and post-romantic and horrifying. But in my case, it didn't because psychedelics are actually a kind of uh, miraculous reality that can stand the test of objective examination. I mean, in other words, there's nothing woo-woo about it. It has to do with perturbing states of brain chemistry and standing back and observing the effects uh, they're wrought thereby. And it's extremely dependable. And from a medical point of view, it's extremely safe and non-invasive. I mean, one of the paradoxes of pharmacology is that the substances which most dramatically affect the mind do so at tiny doses and with very little sequela. This is extraordinary. I mean, it's almost as though the mind in this case is a phenomenon very different from the body, where, you know, to achieve major effects in the body, often uh, massively invasive procedures or large doses of invasive chemicals have to be used. Someone once said to me, referring to LSD, that if you wanted to picture at the molecular level of the power of LSD, imagine an ant that can rip the Empire State Building apart in 30 minutes, one ant. In terms of the scales and the sizes of what's going on, that's an, a reasonable analogy to the power of LSD. So I, I explored all kinds of fringe areas when I was a kid, uh, magic and telepathy and Ouija boards and uh, various invocations, some of which interrupted my career as an altar boy. Uh, you, you couldn't have it both ways, it turned out. And one by one, these things fell, you know, in the same way that as you go through life, you close the door on Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and so forth and so on as you move along toward adulthood. But then I discovered that this, the, the psychedelic dimension seemed to be uh, an exception, that it was though, as though the tidy world of European positivist culture derived from Calvinism and Greek science and so forth and so on had this umbilical point, this place where it was all tied together. And if you untied it, it, it completely deflated and you were left staring into something analogous to uh, William James' description of an infant's world. You were left staring into a blooming, buzzing confusion. Well, uh, you know, what, what is that? What are the implications of that? It wasn't a confusion chaotic enough to be simply mind uh, dissipated into thermodynamic noise. I think a lot of people who have never taken psychedelics have the idea that it's thermodynamic noise, you know, that it's just the brain isn't working right, it's firing randomly, and then some portion of it is trying desperately to lay gestalts of meaning onto this random firing, and so you get this kind of surreal careening from one supposed illusionary perception to another. Anybody who's taken psychedelics knows this is not a very apt or, uh, or cogent description, that actually these things reveal 
uh, scenarios, modalities, um, hierophanies of emotional and poetic power that are very emotionally moving and sometimes leave in their wake powerful ideas ideas as powerful as any of the ideas that have moved and shaped uh, civilization so my my motivation in talking about these things is that I do not say that this is the only path out of the mundane coil of blind casuistry and entropic degradation. I don't say it's the only path out. It's the only path I found. And I checked some of the other major players, but checking doesn't mean I exhausted them. I mean, perhaps yoga can deliver this. Perhaps Mahayanist metaphysics can deliver these things. Perhaps I was impatient or lumpen or simply not intelligent enough. But the, the good news about psychedelics is that they are incredibly democratic. You know, e even the clueless can be swept along if the dose is sufficient. Uh, uh,